Welcome to the comic show where we talk about the latest developments and trends in the world of digital security. I am your host, Comic, and joining me today are Connor and Dejan. Hi, guys. Hi, glad to be here. Thanks for having us. So, let's start with the basics. What is cybersecurity? So, cybersecurity refers to the practice of protecting electronic devices and networks from unauthorized access, theft, and damage. Yes, and it's essential in today's world because so much of our lives are online, from our banking information to our personal data. Absolutely. So, what are some of the biggest cybersecurity threats facing individuals and business today? So, one of the most significant threats is phishing, where attackers will send fraudulent emails to trick people into giving up sensitive information. Ransomware attacks are also becoming increasingly common, where attackers encrypt a victim's data and demand payment in exchange for the decryption key. That's definitely a scary thought. So, how can individuals and businesses protect themselves from these types of attacks? So, for individuals, it's important to be vigilant and not click on suspicious links. Can help. And, and for lot. businesses, having a robust security system in place, such as firewalls and regular backups, can help prevent attacks. Those are great tips. What about emerging technologies like artificial intelligence and the Internet of Things? How do they impact cybersecurity? These technologies bring new security challenges because they are more interconnected than ever before. Devices can't communicate with each other, which means an attack on one device can lead to a breach of an entire network. And with AI, there's... There's the potential for attacks that use machine learning algorithms to target vulnerabilities in a system. Interesting. So what's next for the future of cybersecurity? I think we'll see more focus on AI-driven security solutions that can detect and respond to threats in real time. And with the rise of cloud computing, there will be a greater need for cloud security solutions that can protect data stored in the cloud. Well, it sounds like we have a lot to look forward to in the world of cybersecurity. Thank you, Connor and Dejan, for joining us today. Thanks for having us. It was a pleasure. All right, so for you guys, this was all made by ChatGPT. All right. Cheers. Welcome to the second part of the podcast episode, uh, where we talk about protecting yourself from ransomware and other attacks. Today we have two cybersecurity experts with us, Connor and Dejan. Hi guys. Hi Ryan, thanks for having us. Hi Ryan, great to be here. So let's start with ransomware. Can you explain what it is and how it works? So ransomware is a type of malware that encrypts files on a victim's computer or network and demands a ransom payment to decrypt them. And if the victim doesn't pay the ransom, their files will be or can be deleted or published online, causing significant damage to their reputation or business. Definitely a scary thought. Uh, so uh, <laughs> he's coming <gotten> out <laughs> in. <laughs> Okay. All right, so that's a, that's definitely a scary thought. So how can protect themselves protect from ransomware attacks? From ransomware attacks. Right. You <laughs> cut out so bad in that I had to finish it for you. So one way is to regularly back up oh, no, This is one whole take. We're not making any takes. We're just rocking at this. Uh, one way is to regularly back up porn files on an external hard drive or cloud-based service. That way, if you were targeted by a ransomware attack, you can simply restore your files from the backup. It's also important to keep your operating system and software up to date with the latest security patches, as attackers often exploit vulnerabilities in outdated software. Those are great tips. What about other types of attacks like phishing and social engineering? Phishing is a type of attack where attackers send fraudulent emails or messages to tick people into giving sensitive information, like usernames and passwords. Uh, social engineering is a tactic used by attackers to trick people into giving up information or access to their systems. This can include tactics like impersonating a trusted person or company or using psychological tricks to gain trust. 
So how can individuals protect themselves from these types of attacks? It's important to be skeptical of unsolicited emails or messages that ask for personal information. If you're not sure if an email is legit, contact the sender directly to confirm. And always use strong passwords and two-factor authentication to protect your accounts. Those are great tips. So Those are what... great tips. So what should businesses be doing to protect themselves from these types of attacks? Businesses should have a robust security plan in place that includes regular employee training on how to recognize and respond to attack. And they should have a comprehensive backup and recovery plan to minimize the impact of an attack. Well, it sounds like there are a lot of things individuals and businesses can do to protect themselves from attacks. Thank you, Connor and Dejan, for joining us today. Thanks for having us. It was great to be here, Ryan. Welcome to the podcast episode about networking attacks. Today we have two cybersecurity experts with us, Connor and Dejan. Hi, guys. Hey, Ryan. It's great to be here. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for having us. So let's start with the basics. Can you explain what a DDoS attack is and how it works? It's a type of attack that floods a target website or network with traffic from multiple sources, making it unavailable to legitimate users. And this is often done by a botnet, which is a network of infected computers that can be controlled remotely to perform the attack. Oh, that's definitely concerning. So, how can individuals and businesses protect themselves from DDoS attacks? Businesses can use a DDoS mitigation service that can help identify and block malicious traffic before it reaches the target network. Individuals can use a virtual private network, a VPN, to protect their internet connection and make it more difficult for attackers to attack to target their computer. Those are great tips. What about other types of networking attacks? Another common attack is the man in the middle attack, where an attacker intercepts communication between two parties and can modify or steal data. And there's also the SQL injection attack where an attacker can insert malicious code into a database query to extract sensitive information. So how can individuals and businesses protect themselves from these types of attacks? Using encryption can help protect data from being intercepted in a man-in-the-middle attack. And for the SQL injection attack, it's important to use prepared statements or per parameterized qu queries to prevent the insertion of malicious code. Those are great tips. What about emerging networking threats like Internet of Things? The IoT brings new security challenges because these devices are often not designed with security in mind and can be easily hacked. It's important to change default passwords on IoT devices and keep them up to date with the latest security patches. That's definitely good to know. So, what's next for the future of networking security? We'll see more focus on implementing security in the design of devices and networks, rather than relying on the reactive measures. And with the rise of 5G networks, there will be a greater need for security solutions that can protect the increased data traffic and speed. Well, it sounds like there's a lot to look forward to in the world of networking security. Thank you, Connor and Dejan, for joining us today. Thanks for having us, Ryan. It was a pleasure. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast episode about cybersecurity certifications. Today we have two cybersecurity experts with us, Connor and Dejan. Hi, guys. Hey, Ryan. It's great to be here. Hi, Ryan. Thanks for having us. So let's start with the basics. Can you explain why cybersecurity certifications are important and what types of certifications are available? Cybersecurity certifications are important because they validate a person's knowledge and skills in the field which can be useful for career advancement and professional credibility. There are many different types of certifications available, such as the Certified Information System Security Professional, CISSP, Certified Ethical Hacker, CEH, and the CompTIA Security Plus. That's good to know. What are some of the requirements for obtaining these certifications and how long does it take? 
The requirements and length of time to obtain a certification can vary depending on the specific certification. For example, the CISSP requires at least five years of professional experience in the field, while Security Plus only requires passing the single exam. It's also important to note that some certifications require ongoing education and recertification to maintain that credibility. That's definitely something to keep in mind. Are there any benefits to obtaining multiple certifications? Yes, obtaining multiple certifications can demonstrate a wide range of knowledge and expertise in different areas of cybersecurity, which can make a person more valuable in the job market. And some certifications may be required for specific job roles, so having multiple certifications can increase a person's eligibility for different positions. Makes sense. Are any emerging certifications that people should be aware of? One emerging certification is the Certified Cloud Security Professional, CCSP, which focuses on securing cloud computing environments, and COMT ITF Plus, which goes over the basic IT fundamentals. Another emerging certification is the Certified Information Security Manager, which focuses on information security management and governance. Those both sound like great options for people interested in the field. So what's next for this future of cybersecurity certifications? We may see more specialized certifications for specific areas of cybersecurity, such as IoT security or AI security. And with the increased importance of privacy and data protection, we may, need, I mean, we may, may see more certifications focused on those areas as well. Well, it sounds like there are plenty of options for people interested in obtaining a cybersecurity certification. Thank you, Connor and Dejan, for joining us today. Thanks for having us. It was a pleasure.